How much corn can you raise in a five by 10 space of a raised bed garden? We're gonna harvest our blue corn and we'll let you see. Stay tuned. <clears throat> we wanted to start grinding corn to make our own flour, grits, and cornmeal. So we decided to go with a healthier version of corn and we wanted to try blue corn. So I went to Haas Tools and I selected Ohio blue corn. And I'm really shocked at how well this corn actually did. If you look in here, I planted this corn about eight inches apart. I've got three rows in here. So we have essentially a 30 foot row of corn planted in this five by 10 bed. Now these aren't raised beds. These are boards are just border beds that are on the ground. We planted in the dirt. I've amended my soil right before we planted this corn with some chicken dirt and some organic fertilizer. And then as it was growing, I uh, um, side dress along some calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate is, is nothing but just pure straight um, nitrogen fertilizer. Corn is a very nitrogen heavy feeder. So if you're gonna grow some corn, you're gonna have to feed it something high in nitrogen. If you're organic, you're going to look at something strong like a chicken manure. We, uh, we amended this bed with chicken manure before we, pl we plant it out. We're, but we're out here today to harvest this corn and we're going to see how much corn we got out of this. So I'm just going to reach in here and grab an ear that's, that I see that's kind of popping out. Now as this corn is ready, you'll see that the husk will uh, start drying. The uh, silks are, will turn brown. And if you pull this back, Look at that, that's nice and pretty. You'll see the corn. Oh, and this is, this has uh, got some bad spots in it. I'm not surprised by that. We had a lot of bug pressures this year too. Even though we don't see uh, any corn earworms in here, it looks like we had some, uh, some rock going on. We've had a very rainy part of the year. We were three weeks without rain. And then all of a sudden when we started getting rain, it rains every other day. And I think it's starting to rot our corn. We're gonna have to cut all this rot out of here and then harvest the good, uh, good kernels. So let's go ahead and lay that down. Now the Ohio blue, I think is typically known to bear two ears per stalk. I'm only getting one ear off of this one. Let's see what this corn looks like. This is a little bit better look, looking corn right here. There's a bad spot right there. But all in all, that's a nice, bite, mm -hmm. nice thick cob. Mm -hmm. that's the really corn pretty. curdles look good. Mm -hmm. Just throw that off, the, break that off. And break it's almost that. a purple color. Yep. But we're gonna grind all this up. This is not a sweet corn. This is not a corn that you would pick early, boil up and then try to eat. It's not grown for that. This is grown for uh, grinding and maybe you could even feed this to your uh, to your livestock we're gonna go through and pick just a couple of these out of here and show you and then we're gonna get busy just pick them and putting them in the tray and then we're gonna see how much corn we harvest out of this row and we'll sum it up now there's some right there that did not get pollinated if you see where it didn't mature that means it didn't get pollinated now see those little black bulbs a uh, bug mm -hmm. that's a corn weevil we're gonna have to place this corn in the freezer to kill those weevils before they get in and destroy our corn harvest because if you were to stack this up to dry those corn weevils will get in there and they'll ruin your entire harvest and you don't even know it so we're going to put all this stuff in the freezer all right we're going to get busy just pulling these ears off and then we'll come back and show you
All right, while we're standing here, let's talk about the corn. We had a bad wind, wind storm come through last night and blew over this tall corn that we have here. This is the yellow variety. This is a variety that was given to me by a neighbor. It has been in his family for over 50 years. It doesn't have a name, but it was just starting to tassel out. You see, we're starting to get some tassels. So we should start seeing some corn here soon. This had already blown over one time. About two weeks ago, we had a nice wind storm come through, laid it all over. But even though it had laid it over, the ends of it had curled back up. So I had felt confident that it was going to produce a crop for us. This, car, this here is really took some damage. Several of it in there is broken completely over. Those are not going to make. This grow here may end up being a total loss this year. Um, if it doesn't stand back up in a day or two, we're going to come through and we're going to pull most of this out. Now, if we've got some that's five or six ears that are standing up, we'll go ahead and grow those out and we'll harvest the, the, what corn we can get off those stalks. But it looks like because this wind last night broke the stalks in half, we're going to lose all of this. It's okay. I've got some seed in the, in the freezer and uh, we can replant so those genetics are not lost to me. I still have a reserve I can come back and plant. All right, let's get these inside and uh, let's get them tended to and we'll be right back with you. That's red. Wow. What happened there? That must have been a different variety that got mixed in. That's wow. really pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. Whatever that is, I want to grow some of that. Yeah, let's grow some of that. Might have to save those seeds to replant and see mm -hmm. what we get. You know what? Look how pretty. I mean, it's beautiful. Wow. It didn't have any boo boos. You know? Yep. Yeah. Whatever genetics those are, yeah. we're going to grow that. That's right. Ooh, that's pretty too. That's another one. The red? Yeah. Now I got these from Hall's Tool. Um, I don't know what genetics the company that they sponsor with or contract out with, what other genetics they're growing, but that's clearly not blue. That's a red. And I have my suspensions, but I can't think of the name of it. Very popular red variety, which I think got just mixed into the seed. It does. Seems like an all around better performer. Right. I can tell right now mm -hmm. that growing in beds is not the ideal situation. Right. All the corn that was growing on the outside of the roads did better mm -hmm. than the corn that was growing in the middle. All the ones in the middle were smaller ears. I don't think growing in a in a bed like that is the way to go. When we start putting row crops in the ground, I think that's, I think it needs plenty of space, plenty of sun, uh, plenty of water and plenty of nutrients. I think that's going to be key to corn. But the 
soon as we get this shut, we're going to get this into the freezer for a couple hours and let this start freezing. Make sure we kill all those weevils that may be in this. Because we're going to be saving some of our best for seed. Now that's pretty, that was a smaller ear. Look how pretty that is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now that was a good performer. All right, we got it all shucked out, and this is what we ended up with. We ended up with 40 good ears here in the tray. We've got some laid out here. Most of this stuff, as we were picking, I took notice of it. This is stuff that grew in the middle. The stuff that was growing on the outside of the rows, like this ear, it really filled out more. So I think the amount of sunshine that this got and the competition for the, uh, the soil and nutrients was a little bit better. If I had this planted out in a field, it would have probably performed better overall, but seeing that it, it was inside of a, um, a square foot area, I think it really competed for the nutrient level. The smaller stuff like this, we're not gonna bother with shelling. We're just gonna go in there and throw the whole cob to the chickens and then let them have fun playing around and pecking all that off of there. Now, if we were, um, if we were desperate, we could take the good kernels off of here, but we've got enough. Uh, to get us through with what we're going to use it for. I'm excited to go ahead and get all this shelled off the cob and order a grinder so that we can start grinding out our own flowers and corn meals and, and corn, uh, for our cornbreads and stuff. Now we noticed that we ended up with three different varieties right here. If you look, look how beautiful those colors are right there. And I looked on Hoss Tool and uh, if it's true, this is either a Indian corn or this is um, the other red. I can't remember Jimmy the red. Jimmy Red. So I'm thinking maybe this one's Jimmy Red and these others are flower. I'm not sure. But either way, we're gonna save some, some seed out of this and we're gonna see how this turns out. I'm kind of excited about being able to come back and replant that. But look how beautiful the color is on that one. It's absolutely beautiful colors in there. That's a nice looking ear. I think maybe next year we'll give it a little more space and not try to crowd it uh, as intent intensely as we did. Overall, we're happy. We're going to uh, get this shelled off, put it in the freezer to keep the weevils off of it, and go ahead and start grinding it into flour. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and follow us if you're not already a subscriber. And, uh, and don't forget to keep growing keep building, and always keep adventuring. And together, we're Flumpton Famous. See you next time.